delicious. Happy, happy new year, dearest friends and family. Welcome to our very first video of the year. So why I come from in Ghana on New Year's Day or when we have come out of any turbulence, any trouble sometimes, any victory, all milestones, we celebrate with chicken soup. Yes, it could be light soup, it could be granite soup, or oh, of course this rare rare wine. Rare is made from melon seeds and the soup that comes out of it is just amazing. We've just come out of a very troublesome year and what better way to celebrate and usher ourselves into a new year, hopefully better beginnings good beginnings better times than with this rare rare coin you will love this i know you will come along with me and let's do some cooking so here are the ingredients you are going to need and as always everything is going to be listed for you in the description box as well so in goes our meat okay let's set the meat aside and focus on the rare rare i'm gonna pour the rare rare here so yes, these are seeds and they come from a melon, not cantaloupe, honeydew or anything like that. I don't know exactly what melon it comes from, but it's very good. So I'm going to wash my rare rare. I know you are wondering why I'm washing it when I'm going to toast it. No, we are not going to be toasting it this time. This is a whole new way of cooking rare rare soup. Way easy. I only learned of it last week so this is my first time doing this we are doing this together and as you can see from the beginning it turned out great so i know you will love this i just don't want to lose it so i'm going to let it run through a colander rather i've pretty much cleaned it already so i'm just washing it off to get any dust of it I don't want to lose even a grain. All right. I'm going to transfer this here. Then I'm going to add some water to this to boil. This should be enough. We all know making rare rare soup is a whole process. Yes, it is difficult to make this soup, but this recipe, simple. All right, so whilst the rare rare boils, let's get ready with our eggplants. This is not the traditional eggplant, but it still will work. Hopefully you are in Ghana or in a place where you can find garden eggs. Straight from my garden. <laughs> I'm going to boil one onion with it. I'll just cut it up like this, I guess. Add it in here. My tomatoes have been washed already, so I'm just going to add them as well. I'll add one pepper to this. Everything else will go in after it's cooked. Just enough water to cover. This should be enough. Then I'm going to boil this as well. You may be wondering why I'm not boiling the rare rare with the other vegetables because my mom taught me this recipe over the phone last week and she she insists that you throw away the water for the rare rare. But I understand because rare rare has a strong smell and when you boil it, the smell that comes from it, if you put it in the soup, your soup is not going to be that great. So please boil it on the side, drain it, and then you blend it with fresh water. That is how she wants us to do it. So I'm prepping the ingredients that will go on my meat now. I have some ginger and garlic in my blender. To that, I'm adding one large onion. And of course, I added the other onion to the other vegetables. And this is going to go on my meat when it is done. I'm just going to add a little water to the ingredients in the blender to help make it easy to blend. Then I'm going to go ahead and blend it. I'm 
all right let's focus on our meat now so we are using chicken normally chicken is what we use in making reverend quine and this is very hard chicken straight from the farmer this is not even frozen so this is like really how we do it at home i've added some salt and also my blended ingredients i'm also going to be adding some basil but i wanted to stress the fact that in me adding salt to my chicken now i cannot just pour my blended rare onto my meat once it is done being blended and strained i would have to cook my rare on the side let it boil over before i pour it over my meat if i put the fresh rare here with salt on my meat it is going to cause it to clump the salt will make it clump just like a goosey would do and you don't want that so you could do this or cook your meat without any salt and have the rare on it when it's time for it to go in and once it boils you would add salt and your meat will not be that perfectly seasoned so i always try to do this rather so checking on my rare now looking very translucent i think it's, it wouldn't look like this on a norm, normal day so i think it's a little it's soft enough now I'm going to bring it up the drain and then we'll blend it and so yes I'm going to drain away the water that I used to boil this and we are going to blend with fresh water I still ended up with a little bit of gravel on the bottom so be careful this goes here into the blender now So now that we are not roasting our rare, rare that fear factor i hope has been removed because i know most people don't want to try this soup because once you burn your rare, rare your soup is going to be a little bit on the bitter side or very bitter anyway and so people just avoid this for that and of course that stress of you making sure you don't forget to put so salt one cup in of here water to help blend it so my mom called me a few days ago and she said she had a tip for me and it ended up being that she had been told way long ago even before she gave birth to my big sister that if you were not so sure of perfectly roasting your rare for your soup you might as well just boil it because she said she had made soup and it was burnt a little bit so it tasted funny and her grandma told her boiling it is a better option than for somebody like that but she never tried it because of course she wanted to be perfect and she got it roasted and it was good so she never actually tried this until very recently she was about to make soup with rare, rare and she remembered that she had never tried it so she was like i've never even tried what my grandma asked me to do and i'm already an old woman so <laughs> she's not that old so yes yeah, she tried it and it was perfect so she called me and she wanted me to make this fine chicken and share with our kk fam that is how much you are loved by my family oh we love you all so so much we love you anyway so our era is blended i am straining it now and Yes, this blender is so good. Normally, if you've made rare soup before and you know how much you would have to throw away as residue, but I got almost everything well blended here and that is so good because that wasn't a lot of rare that I had to start with and considering how much soup I wanted to make, I'm so happy. So I'm going to end up straining it one more time. So I will rinse the strainer and then use it to strain one more time you could use a fine strainer and not milk bag or anything but this is a very fine strainer anyway and i just like to do it twice just to make sure i don't have any residue in here so i'll rinse the strainer like i said and then i'll use it one more time rinse my strainer so i can strain one more time So now that I've rinsed my strainer, I'm going to strain for the second time. I always try to leave what is settled on the bottom because if it has any sand or anything else that is that desirable to be in the soup, it typically settles on the bottom. So leaving that little part of the bottom helps you to avoid having that in your soup. I've rinsed my blender again with just about another extra cup of water and this I'm going to strain as well and I'm still leaving what is settled on the bottom and at this point I think our river is perfectly straight now so I'm going to pre-boil this 
one thing about Rare Rare, even though this is still a different process, if I'm to I want to season my meat with salt so I'm going to boil this on the side and then once this boils over you can pour it onto your meat if you do it any other way you are going to have clumps it's just like a goosey so once salt comes into contact with it before it boils it clumps up and yes I repeated that so I hope it is stressed enough for you I think this is all cooked now So I'm going to set that aside and get ready for blending and at this point I'm going to also start cooking the actual soup so the meat is here now ready to start cooking and this is the rare rare of course I'm going to let it boil over first so I'm going to blend this it's not going in anytime soon but I just wanted to get it out of the way so I'm going to blend it and set it aside So I'm going to be adding about a tablespoon of tomato paste to my soup. I forgot to show you this with my other ingredients but it's just a tablespoon and this is going to help give my soup a beautiful color. So instead of me trying to melt it or dissolve it with a little water and stressing over it, I'm just going to put it here with everything else in the blender and blend. So it's very well combined, well incorporated. I just have to pour it into my soup when it's time. So my rara is boiling as you can see. Be careful because this is just like granite. If you don't watch it, it's, it can boil over and cause a big mess and you're going to lose what my mom claims is the most delicious part of the soup. You know, a Ben Quine granite soup, whatever. If it boils over, it's like the end of the world to her. <laughs> so anyway, now that it's boiling, as you can see, I am going to pour it onto my meat and you see, oh, Reverend Quine Papa Pao. So this is how you want it to be and look at how gorgeous it's looking already. Rare and Quine really has to look like this. So this is the water that I use to boil my vegetables. I'm just going to set it aside so I can use the pot to boil my cassava and plantain for the fufu. So I'll come back to this later. So I have my water here. I'm going to bring it to a boil. And whilst it boils, I'm going to peel my plantains. So this fufu is going to be prepared the way we will traditionally make it. It's just that I'm not going to actually pound it. But I'm going to make it with boiled plantain and cassava. And the blender is going to do that job for me. This is my favorite method of making fufu. But it's not easy on your blender at all. It can really, really cause... A lot of stress to your blender so I really try not to do it that often I used to make this a lot when it was just my husband and I and my daughter barely ever ate fufu I learned how to make this long ago on Facebook I don't even remember how it just came I've shared it onto my Instagram several times with other people I used to make this with my Cuisinart food processor it's just a four cup food processor and it was just perfect for two people but now that it's four of us and we all love our fufu I just use the the raw you know blending my raw ingredients rather 
and then prepare it over the stove top or in the microwave that is easier on the blender especially with a vitamix blender it's perfect so anyway my water has come to a boil i am going to be using frozen cassava if you can find fresh cassava that is perfect for you all the better but it's hard for me to find cassava so i prefer the frozen one it's easier i just stuck up on it so my plantain goes in now no salt this is fufu so you don't need any salt on it and i'm going to let that boil so i'm coming to check on my soup now it's doing amazing it smells so good my soup is definitely doing good it's looking the part of what it is a fifa from quite new year soup and at this point i'm going to add my blended tomatoes and onion and eggplants at this point I cannot tell the difference between this and what I would normally make the roasted rare soup. They smell, taste, look the same and trust me I've been making rare soup for way more than half my lifetime probably since I was 15 years <laughs> and this is very very good very good. I'm not going the hard way anymore. Why make it hard when you can make it easy like seriously? So I rinsed out my blender with quite a lot of water because my blended ingredients was very thick. The vegetables that went in there, so it really thickened my soup. And so I added more water to help thin it out a little bit. And at this point, I'm just going to let it simmer down until it is perfectly cooked so we can enjoy this. Oh yes, it's almost done. Plantain cooking with the cassava perfectly. And our soup is looking lit. I think my soup is still very thick and it's not done cooking yet so it's going to simmer down and thicken up even some more and I'm going to thin it out and then I also remembered I didn't use the water that I strained for my veggies so I'm going to use some of that here to help thin it out and now I'll just let it simmer down checking on our cassava which has boiled for almost uh, 20 minutes that is our cassava and plantain don't do this please 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 don't do this don't be like me just pick maybe one of it up with a fork or something expose it to the cool air a little bit before you feel it but anyway I did that uh, it's just old old ways habit <laughs> and I'm okay with it so don't worry about me and I'm going to strain this now it is perfectly cooked and so this is just really really like pounding fufu right so strain it uncover it let it air out a little bit and then we will come on and blend it so it's very essential that you let the cassava cool off a little bit at least before you start blending it because otherwise just like how fufu turns to be when you pound it very hot it's going to be a little bit it's not going to have that sticky consistency, you know, it will be a bit tufu tufu. I don't even know how to explain it, but I hope you understand that the texture will not be how you want it. The starchiness of the fufu won't be like really legit, you know. So anyway, I'm using my Ninja blender. You could use the food processor as well or any good food processor that you have. Like I said, I used to use my Quiznut food processor until I realized you could actually use your Ninja as well. So this is the blender, not even the food processor. And I'm going to be using that. I know you see it has seen better days because yes, I make fufu with it. And I also use it to uh, blend a lot of dry herring. So it's really very scratched on the inside, but it still does the job. Yes. And there we go. Can you see it change texture? It's almost done. Fufu now where we are in the Ayafi. Sao. Pepe. So easy. So simple. But like I said, this is very, very harsh on your blender. So you will have to test them all and see which method is good for you and for your equipment. If you think it's worth it, then maybe you'll be doing more of this. But I really don't do this a lot often anymore because, hey, <laughs> I want to keep this blender. Okay. I want to eat my fufu, but I want to keep my blender as well. This is pretty much the consistency you want. If your blender is newer, it's going to even be better. This is perfect, but it could be better. The texture can be very, very, very smooth. If you've seen it on my Instagram before, you know how it can be. 
or even in other videos i never showed you but yes with the same blender you could have it very very smooth but this is perfect be careful you know with what i just did you know trying to get the fufu of the blade i try to be extra careful and now i'm going to try to mold this but i also had more cassava and plantain in my pot so i went ahead and blended that as well and i'm going to be adding that in before we shape everything so this is the other part the remaining and now this is all the fufu for my family so i'm going to split it up uh yeah that kind of said me to try fufu no uh-huh see the texture see how perfect this is yes this is really maybe you agree with me the best way to make your fufu And so I'm trying to mold it, shape it just the way we normally would make fufu. And yeah, back in the day, if you were going to serve your husband or any man, any grown up man, you would have to make this too. So I would, even if it's this side, I would have to make one, a bigger one and a little one on the side or almost like twins. Yes, you could not just put just one like this in a bowl for a man. That would be like a total sign of disrespect. Fufu na nya ye fufu fufu na abe And obviously my right arm thought it has done a lot of work so it needed to eat first so it had a little piece of fufu sitting there the whole time that we didn't catch So our soup at this point is looking good. As you can see, it has thickened. The oils are back on the surface, simmering beautifully. I'm just adding some peppers here to bring in some heat. As you saw, I only added one pepper in the beginning because of the kids. So yeah, I left the stalks on because I don't want the soup to be too spicy for the kids. And our soup, it's really done. I'm just going to let the heat go through the pepper a little bit. And it's time to eat. New Year, Kwai. I said it. This is good. It smells so good. I really hope you are able to try this. Mm, you will love it. I'll thin it out just a little bit as well. I think it's a little too thick. Pretty much our soup is done. From what she was kitchen, dead out, delicious, yeah, oh, delicious, dead out, delicious, yeah, oh, delicious, dead out, delicious, oh, delicious, dead out, delicious. Definitely cooked, and you can tell this is a fiacoco, so it is not falling apart. Ah, this is gonna be good, so good. It's all done, so time to sit and eat. Yes, wow, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Sea soup, sea soup. Uh huh, this is popping, right? This is so good, so so good. I know. So just look and enjoy and make plans to make this, okay? If not for me, do it for my mom because she thought about you all and she really, really wants you to try this. That's why she really had to remember this recipe just so she can let her daughter share it. So please try it for us. Thank you all so much for the love. YouTube tells me most of my videos are watched by just about 20% of my subscribers. So most of you watching me are not subscribed. Please, please, please consider subscribing. Please hit that bell so you get notification as well. And until I come your way next time with something delicious, be loving, be kind, be happy.